like the biggest thing is, you know, so Katie and I have been going to Highlands for quite a while, but that's the issue is like when I'm gone, I'm usually gone for long stretches of time, usually, you know, up to 17 days at a time. And you can never quite get plugged into church. So it's just like, I would miss services, miss things. And you're never quite connected. And, and that was one of the biggest problems because as you're trying to grow in a group, just showing up to service never, you never quite get plugged into showing up to service. It's really, you gotta be in the groups and make those connections with people more so than just get a message from Hal. Uh, and I think that's where we, the direction Katie and I were trying to go with that. And so when we, when we ran into the, hey, let's, we can do this virtually thing. And this is all pre-COVID. So like, you know, now it's a normal thing. We don't think too much of it, but at the time it was like a Zoom call. What's Zoom? I don't know what Zoom is. So the getting plugged in in that respect, I think was huge for me for two reasons. One, um, getting to actually know people at the church because you know normally if I show up like one maybe two Sundays a month nobody really knows you about may maybe the greeter at the door so like Nancy knew me <laughs> but but you know everybody else didn't really knew who I was and I didn't really know who they were um, but being able to connect with somebody weekly in a virtual environment where we can still build those those connections and then when I'm actually home we just continue those in real life. So that's one of the big things there. And then the other thing was it forced me to actually pay attention to church, even though I'm on the road. Cause it's so easy to go, ah, I'm not home. You know, I, you know I'll just, I won't bother watching the service. Like this kind of held me accountable to that, to watching the service and, uh, and, and really getting, digging deeper into it. That was a huge perk to the whole process because when you've got little ones and they demand all your time and attention when they're awake and it just made getting involved with groups more difficult because you've already got a limited window from off work at five and need to be in bed by 7 30 ideally so to have to load them in the car go somewhere have the opportunity to socialize have the opportunity to have a deep meaningful session while constantly being interrupted by the whatever shenanigans or hopefully not mortal wounds they get. It takes all that away, they're in bed, and then we can focus fully on the small group with the people we're there with and with what God's saying, what we got from the service that week without that interruption. It was, it was a great change. It made it so much easier to be consistent in attendance and really get to know everyone else in the group. Here, we had a gathering at the house and both of them were there and I said, well, I just wanna, Susie and I wanna, just for you, the group to think about something. We've been asked by leadership in this next semester to consider leading a teen parenting group. And, uh, and we wanna say yes because when our church asks something of us, we want to say, yes, this is what we told these guys. And so I'd like for you guys to think about that. And we'd like for this group to continue. And I'd like for you to think about, you know, how this group could continue, but give us at least a semester to go and do what our church asks of us. Because when your church asks you to do something, we want to say yes. Well, uh, Jamie approached me. Um, so that was the, that was kind of the initial thing that started. And he was like, he just, he, you know, she shot me a text and was like, hey, uh, what do you think about doing, um, digging deeper ourselves? And he was, and you kind of brought it up as, hey, I, I don't want to take it on all, all myself because you didn't know if every week you could be there yeah, and things like we that. We both have some, you much more yeah. than me, but yeah, we're so, both week to week, yeah. That was, that to me, that was kind of the, the big thing, or at least my side of it that I saw. And I was like, absolutely, I, you know, going from, you know, being a participant into a group to leading a group, I don't think that that's a, such a huge step necessarily. Um, it is a step, but I, I'm always a, I always kind of believe that if you take that step and you, and you go and lead a little bit, you're not gonna get everything perfect, but you grow so much more as a result of that. And, and that's, to me, if you can turn around and you can share the gospel and it be a blessing to other people, that's 
that's what Jesus did. So that's, that's the goal there. For me, after Chris had told us that they were thinking about it and considering it, and I knew we didn't want to hold them back from saying yes. So Katie and I were talking about it and I was, I'd been thinking and her and I had been discussing trying to lead a group for a while, but it's an intimidating idea of saying, yes, I'm competent <laughs> enough to be a leader and put yourself out there and then hope other people, hopefully some you know, hopefully a lot you don't, say, yeah, I'd like to be in a group that they're leading. So when Chris said that they were considering another one, I knew we already had such a great group put together, it was the perfect uh, coward's way out. <laughs> <So> <laughs> to just say, well, we'll just step in so that Thanks for building the group for us and yeah. just handing the reins over. That's right. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> It'd be a perfect opportunity to lead, to start, to dig deeper in a lot more ways. So it just seemed all teed up, almost like it was a plan.